Welcome to Everything Distributed. Today, we are going to talk about the consensus problem, which is my favorite problem in distributed computing. Basically, entire of uh, uh, my entire PhD thesis is about consensus. And last time we talked about model, and then typical model in consensus area is that we have n nodes, and up to f of them may fail, and they may suffer like crash or Byzantine failure. And we have a typical synchronous or synchronous system assumptions, and uh, we assume that the unique case is reliable. So we have a FIFO channel, no message loss. And then the communication network is a complete graph, meaning that any pair of nodes, they can communicate with each other. So the goal is to reach consensus. So what is consensus? If you remember from last time, we want to specify the correctness property, including both the safety and liveness. So if you check the dictionary, consensus or agreement, they are kind of, um, have a very similar meaning, and then it goes like this. You have some entities, and then they want to reach agreement, and then there's some of, uh, based on their input, okay? So if you want to translate this into the formal kind of uh, uh, specification, is that we have input, what's the input is your opinion, and we have output because uh, the uh, agreement is our output. And obviously, we must have agreement, meaning that everybody has exactly the same output. Okay? And is that all? No, because that implicitly, we mean, uh, we think that, okay, the consensus can eventually be solved, or eventually we can reach agreement. So we have this termination property. So roughly speaking, sorry, roughly speaking, agreement is a safety property. Termination is that something good eventually will happen. So we have this liveness property. So think about it right now for consensus. Is this all we need or is something is missing? And the answer is that base. If we only define agreement and termination, then we don't really interpret what base means, okay? So there should be three properties for consensus. It's termination, agreement, and validity. So we have end nodes, inputs, uh, and termination is obvious. You eventually need to have an output. Agreement is everybody has the same output. And somehow you need to link the output based on the input, okay? So you cannot just arbitrarily agree on something. So suppose everyone proposed zero, and then you say, no, 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 everyone we should agree on one. So that's not a typical, how typically the consensus works, right? So we have termination, agreement, and validity, and then that's what we need to achieve of, uh, for solving consensus problem. So there are many different forms of the validity property, and one of the most intuitive one is that if every node has the same input V, then every uh, the only possible output, the only reasonable output is V. And then the other one is called integrity, meaning that your output must be some input, must be uh, the input value proposed by some node, okay? So if you think about it, like the very similar, but there's a very slight difference, okay? So if your input assumed to be binary, meaning that it's either zero or one, then actually validity is equal to integrity. But if your input value can take that two or three or even more possible values, then they are not equal. So that's an exercise for you. Try to figure out what's the difference between the two. Then sometimes we also call integrity as a strong validity. So later on we will see why that's the case. And there are many other forms, for example, they say non-triviality is that we consider initial configuration. By initial configuration, we mean that different distribution of the input values. You can say that some of them lead to all zero or all one output. So, uh, 
it's obvious different from the, the integrity thing we defined before. And we also have this uh, notion of majority, so the output must be at least the majority of the inputs. And, and I just say that most of the consensus this problem focus on either the validity or integrity. Okay. And now, before we go into detail, before I tell you how to solve this problem, we should ask the question, why is this important? What's the real application? And consensus is kind of one of the most fundamental primitive. And if you know how to solve consensus, you know how to solve any other kind of things in most of any other kind of things in the literature of distributed computing. Here I list some of them and yeah and here like even though like typically this problem is called reliable mode or reliable multi case but like because right now so many uh, people and so many different uh, so different uh, so many researchers from different fields are trying to work on like different kind of distributed uh, algorithms or sometimes the terminology is a bit confusing but uh, here I define exactly what I mean so that reliable total order multicast meaning I send some message and everyone need to send exactly the same set of the updates same set of message in the same ordering and then I also have a failure detector meaning that I can know exactly which machine has failed or not. And for leader election is that I need to elect a leader among us all, among all the nodes, and everybody knows about it. And I also have mutual exclusion, meaning that only one person, one node can be somehow elected or as a certain part at a time. And then that's very useful for managing that critical resource, okay? And then the key here is that uh, if you know how to solve consensus, you can solve all of them. And we will visit some of the, those other primitive there because there might be some more efficient applications, uh, sorry, more efficient implementation. And then if you kind of think deeper about this, why is consensus so important? And then that's because that the fundamental challenge of distributed system is that you want to coordinate different set of nodes or even all the nodes. So for example, multicast, you care about the ordering of messages, the failure detector, you care about like whether one uh, the node fail or not, but uh, it's up or down. And then you like for the leader election, you want to know the leader. For the mutual exclusion, you want to know that who can access what. And all this require coordination, and then the most intuitive solution is consensus. And later on, we will visit the many interesting real-world applications that rely on consensus. For example, distributed replicated storage. If you think about data center, our uh, data is stored inside data center. And then we need to use this kind of distributed database, distributed replicated storage to make sure our data can be stored safely and I still have some high performance. And then if you know something about Bitcoin blockchain, Fundamentally, they are solving consensus. And then for distributed robot in certain application, they also need to solve consensus. So it's a very exciting problem because it's so fundamental. Now, let's think about what consensus is and how to solve it and why is it difficult. So now starting from the very simple case when no one will uh, crush, when no one will fail. Then what do we do right now? We use voting. So it's like solving consensus as easy as one, two, three. First, you send your input to every other node because it's a synchronous system. So at a second step, I can receive all the message from everyone else. Then what do you do at the third one? Voting, you take the majority of the message that you receive, then you say, this is my output. So far, so good. That's pretty easy. So what could go wrong if like, something may fail? And then that's the challenge 
of dealing with a distributed system. As we see, as we have seen before, nothing is really reliable. Anything can fail. No, suppose you just have three machines and then it's a click. Everyone can talk with each uh, everyone else. Suppose this machine, you only have one machine that may fail. This machine is able to send the message to the bottom machine. But I somehow at the process of the sending the second message to the other machine, boom, it crash. So now the problem is that if you look at our simple algorithm, the R at the second step is different for the remaining machines at the bottom. So that, that when you do the output, they may output different things. And if you remember the correctness condition, we need to satisfy the condition for all the possible execution. So this solution is not for Tara. Okay. So now let's look at the simplest uh, the, the problem formulation is that we have crush and then the network or the net system is synchronous. And one key observation we want to make is that it is sufficient if that every node that have not crushed yet will receive the same set of values. And then from that point on, it's easy to solve consensus because everybody has a consistent set of value. Everyone has a consistent view. So now the assume it's a click, then the algorithm is very simple. Let me introduce you a, notion, a notation first. Values IR. So remember everybody proceed in a lock step, and then this is wrong R. And then values I meaning that the set of input values that's collected or none to no I at the beginning of wrong R. Okay. So initially, you only know your input, which is vi. So values i1 is equal to vi. Okay. And what do you do? You still need to exchange message. But like if you think about the previous example, you say that, okay, I only exchange message once is not enough, so I should do more times. Okay. And that's why that we just use that for loop. And then the key here is that I need to run for f plus one times, and then I do a multicast of that what I have no uh, what I have collected so far. By multicast is simply doing that unicast n times. Okay. Then first you say that okay, my future values is equal to the value right now, and then because I'm going to receive the uh, set of message from others i just i take the union to my like, kind of values i r plus one and then you repeat this process then till f plus one wrong you are done then you can output the minimum of the received value at f plus two okay so termination it's obvious because it's a synchronous system. You run it for f plus one runs, and validity is also obvious. Why is that? If you go back, you say that this a uh, minimum. So uh, that, uh, if it's uh, if you output zero, it must because like somebody has sent zero before, right? Then agreement is not as obvious but uh, still manageable. And I would say that the hint is this F plus one idea. And also the main observation I mentioned earlier. And another hint is that we have a pigeonhole principle. So why F plus one? Because that I we have f plus one runs and only up to f failure. So we know that there exists one run such that nobody will fail. Okay. So in that run j, every node that has not crushed in that run will receive all the values sent in that run. So at that point, everybody will know all the values exist at that point. So after that run, everyone will exchange exactly the same thing. And then you are going to output the same thing by using the minimum. Okay. 
And in terms of that, even though this algorithm is pretty simple, it's in fact optimal. It's optimal in two sense, number of rounds and number of nodes. So the first lower bound is that any crush tolerant consensus algorithm needs at least F plus one nodes to solve consensus. Because in the trivial case that everybody will fail, then you don't really have any output. And then the next lower bound is not as obvious. It's that when your number of nodes n is greater than, strictly greater than f plus one, then you need at least f plus one rounds to solve consensus. Okay. And the proof is not very intuitive. We might revisit it next time. Okay. Well, I just to remember that how do we solve consensus? We need to keep exchanging values and we need to run long enough in order to solve consensus. Okay, so the takeaway is that the definition and why is it important and then the simple solution and how we argue the correctness condition for the algorithm that we presented. Okay, thank you. That's all.